good afternoon sir nice to see you here we are having the participants from the government departments industries and uh, the, the college students also so that you know they just want to understand what is happening in the weighing balances and you are the being the pioneer in the field as i have seen uh, in the you were in, earlier in ptb germany so i hope that uh, we will be certainly benefited our countrymen will be say, benefited sir it's a small seminar for uh, one, uh, one and a half hour today but we will continue these type of webinars for the indian manufacturers we have large number of indian manufacturers we just want to get this information disseminate this information uh, so that we can also be get benefited from germany yeah mr uh, mr kalinj has also joined good afternoon sir how are you uh, santosh ji kalinj ko sab ko uh, kar dijiye Please. Yes, already in call, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Kalinj sir has also joined. Also joined. Now, hi, Mr. Agarwal. Sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you here again. Nice to see you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Long time. Mr. Agarwal is also on the line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think physically we met about in 2019. Sir, ma'am also joined. Yes, sir. 19. Long time ago. Very Three very years good. now. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Uh, good afternoon to all. It is my privilege to invite all of you on this uh, one and a half hour workshop for the manufacturers, industries, laboratories. The end of this country, the government officers of this country, to just understand what is a non-automatic weighing instrument and how how it operates, how it functions. We have with us additional secretary. He's now additional in our department. She is an IS officer, 992 from Charanada. She is a master's in biochemistry, and uh, she wanted to join the nuclear medicine, but. Fortunately, she selected an IS, and that's why she now she has an experience of more than three years as an IS officer. She has done very several, several. She has done different jobs in India in the state government as well as in the government of India. She has worked in education, labor, health, disability, environment, and fitness, etc. There are a lot of. Uh, there's a big list of uh, her work. Working, I know about the DBT. She is well for it. So now she is basically the chief uh, consumer authority in, the, and, uh, the, the, in our department. So uh, consumer protection authority. And, uh, she is uh, basically working uh, for the benefit of consumers. I know uh, her since last more than one and a half, about two years. And uh, she is she is very much instrumental for the legal methodology also. Whenever we went for any help. the technology she is always trying to help us to kindly innovate our business and this uh, okay. Yes, please, ma'am. Nidhi Kare, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, madam. Pranam. Uh, pranam. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is once again you are a very proud uh, to be uh, to be present here and uh, to be interacting with uh, all the stakeholders in uh, legal metrology and I must also uh, before beginning should also uh, bring greetings on uh, the occasion of Holi which is one of uh, our major festivals. Uh, some parts in our country are still uh, enjoying the colorful uh, festivities. Uh, I can only say that uh, when the country entered into the Amrit Kal, uh, we decided to uh, have a lot of lecture a series on the occasion of 75 years of independence. And uh, it is in that uh, regard that we are trying to out, uh, create 
an environment where we can reach out to most people and particularly those who are in the uh, who are uh, not only uh, directly engaged with legal metrology but also train uh, students uh, build capacities of uh, consumer organizations consumer activists and also make sure that the emergent demands in legal metrology are discussed uh, i think i i should uh, also uh, say that uh, legal metrology is uh, although it is very important and provides an assurance of quality and quantity uh, not uh, many people are actually uh, well versed with what it takes when we buy a liter of milk every day or when we buy something it could be a, a pack of biscuits it could be uh, one kg of rice or any such thing uh, by actually engaging uh, in such workshops i think uh, we are trying to disseminate the information about legal methodology and how it is so important in our everyday life and as consumers essentially how we should be uh, impo uh, how we should be actually uh, very vigilant about what we are getting uh, so with these words i once again uh, welcome all of you and uh, congratulate mr ashutosh agarwal ji who has been uh, in the forefront of organizing such events and uh, has been able to actually uh, bring lot of uh, expertise on the table thank you so much thank you very much ma'am for your kind words certainly we are trying our best to do better and we have today with us the german scientist from ptb and uh, sartorius so that certainly our indian manufacturers and the government officers will be benefited from their experiences thank you very much madam for your kind words thank you sir now i will request our uh, director sir beloved director mr dikshi sir jinhone legal metrology mein sare ke sare rules banane mein or sara ka sara jo he has done lot of work for the development of legal metrology in the country a lot, lot of grant was issued to the state governments for the construction of laboratory buildings equipments were also supplied by the government of india and he is he is basically instrumental for framing the legal metrology act and the rules so i will request that to sir sir kindly say two few words and he is a he is cml member from india he represents the cml and the oml in the international at international level from the uh, part of government of india thank you very much sir please kindly sir dikshi sir adarniya additional security mahodaya aapke shabdon se hum log jo hai har samay prabhavit hote hain aur इनक्रेज होते हैं और लीगल मेट्रोलॉजी के प्रति और हम लोगों का कंसंट्रेशन दिन प्रतिदिन बढ़ता रहता है तो आपका ये डायरेक्शन जो है तमाम मीटिंग्स में उपस्थित होकर जो है हम लोगों को मार्गदर्शन देना ये हम लोग के लिए बहुत अनुकरणीय है और इससे जो है मैन्युफैक्चरर्स uh, को भी जो है ये सपोर्ट मिलता है कि हम लोग के साथ जो है गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की इतनी बड़ी अथॉरिटी खड़ी है जो है तो उनको भी इनोवेशंस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग और तमाम तमाम विषयों में जो है आ, अपने को जो है कॉन्फिडेंस प्राप्त होता है कि आ, इस तरह के समारोह में जो है आदरणीय एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी महोदया लोगों को इनक्रेज करती हैं और उनके डायरेक्शन से प्रभावित होकर जो विद्यार्थी हैं या मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं वो अपनी विभिन्न प्रकार की टेक्नोलॉजीज को जो है आर आर के माध्यम से गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया को शेयर करते हैं और उनको सर्टिफिकेट इत्यादि मिलता रहता है 
सार्टोरियस दुनिया की अहम कड़ियों में से एक है जिसने मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में अपना अहम रोल अदा किया है पर्टिकुलरली द प्रिसीजन मेजरमेंट्स में प्रिसीजन मेजरमेंट में जो योगदान है सार्टोरियस का वो भुलाया नहीं जा सकता है और ये एवरीडे चैलेंजिंग है ये नई नई टेक्नोलॉजी लेकर आते हैं मार्केट में देखने को मिलती हैं और जो है उनको टेस्टिंग के लिए जो है हमारे स्टेट में जो इनके क्लास वन एंड क्लास टू एक्यूरेसी के बैलेंसेस हैं उनके मास स्टैंडर्ड्स उस लेवल के अवेलेबल नहीं है एक ये जो है ग्राउंड लेवल पर हम लोगों को तकलीफ है कि लोग जो है वर्किंग स्टैंडर्ड्स के माध्यम से उनका वेरिफिकेशन करते हैं लेकिन जब वर्किंग स्टैंडर्ड्स से वेरिफिकेशन उनका होता है लेकिन उस बैलेंस की एक्यूरेसी जो है वर्किंग स्टैंडर्ड वेट से बहुत ज्यादा होती है बैलेंस की जो मुख्य चीज होती है वो ये है कि उसको किस वेट से कैलिब्रेट किया गया है यदि वो हाई एक्यूरेसी का वेट है तो उसे जो है प्रिसीजन मेजरमेंट होता है और करेक्ट मेजरमेंट होता है यदि हाई एक्यूरेसी का वेट अवेलेबल नहीं है तो जो प्रिसीजन बैलेंसेस होते हैं उनके जो मेजरमेंट होती हैं वो उस लेवल की नहीं होती है जितना पब्लिक का रिक्वायरमेंट होता है तो इस दिशा में आ, हमारी आर बहुत बड़ा रोल अदा करती हैं क्योंकि यदि आप पाएंगी तो मोर देन हंड्रेड नंबर ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज जो है आर एस एल अहमदाबाद बेंगलोर फरीदाबाद इत्यादि के साथ जुड़ी हैं जो मेडिकल क्षेत्र से ही हैं जो है और वो अपने वेट्स मेजर्स इत्यादि अपना कैलिब्रेशन के लिए यहाँ लाती हैं और उन उपकरणों के माध्यम से वो अपना क्वालिटी मेजरमेंट की व्यवस्था करती हैं तो उसके कारण जो है औषधियों का या अन्य चीजों का जो भी मार्केट में जो भी चीजें प्राप्त होती हैं हमारे डे टू डे लाइफ में उसकी गुणवत्ता बनी रहती है जो है और आर जो है इस तरह की यदि सेमिनार अनवरत करता रहे तो इंडस्ट्री को एक अपना पन मतलब उनको एक ऐसा साथी मिलेगा जो कि उनकी टेक्नोलॉजी को विकास करने में अपना अहम रोल अदा करेगा जो और ये भी बता सकता है कि जो है कि उनके टेक्नोलॉजी में क्या कमी है और क्या चीज है उसको कैसे जो है आगे बढ़ाया जाए जाए जो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स बैलेंसेस हैं वो आज ही नहीं जो है आगे की भी दुनिया में अपना महत्वपूर्ण रोल जो है समाज के विकास के लिए अपना योगदान करते रहेंगे जो है और टेक्नोलॉजी प्रतिदिन जो है अनवरत बदलती रहेगी इसलिए जो है इस तरह के सेमिनार जहाँ पर अधिक से अधिक मैन्युफैक्चरर इकट्ठा हों और सार्टोरियस जैसे मैन्युफैक्चरर्स के रिप्रेजेंटेटिव इस सभा या इस तरह की सेमिनार्स का में अपना प्रवचन देंगे या अपने को संबोधित करेंगे कि उनके बैलेंसेस किस तरह के होते हैं और उनकी क्या चीज हो सबसे बड़ी जो चैलेंज की चीज इस समय आती है वो इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक बैलेंसेस की आती है जो इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक बैलेंसेस की टेक्नोलॉजी जो है अभी भी इंडिया में उस तरह की नहीं बन पाई है जिस तरह से होना चाहिए कि हम जो इंटरनेशनल मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं उनको बेहतर कंपटीशन दे सकें जो है लोड सेल में तो हम लोग जो है अपने को काफी स्थापित कर लिए हैं लेकिन इलेक्ट्रो के लिए ये जरूरी है कि आर इत्यादि जो है इस विषय पर अपना अधिक से अधिक रिसर्च का भी काम करें जो है इंडस्ट्रीज के साथ मिलकर जो है कि कैसे जो है इस तरह की टेक्नोलॉजी का अधिक से अधिक विकास किया जाए क्योंकि फ्यूचर जो है इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक प्रिंसिपल्स 
پر بیسڈ جو ہے ٹیکنالوجی ٹائپ بیلنسز کا ہی ہے جو ہے اور وہ جو ہے وہ ہمارے جو لوکل مینوفیکچررس ہیں وہ ان کی چنوتی لگاتار بنی رہے گی تو ایک تو یہ ہے کہ ہمارے پاس کتنے اچھے ماس اسٹینڈرڈس ہیں اور دوسرے جو ہے ہمارے پاس کتنے اچھے بیلنسز ہیں ان کے لیے جو ہے ہمیں ہر سمے انورت کام کرنا چاہیے جو ہے ماس میجرمنٹ کی جو تکنیک ہی ہے وہ دیکھنے میں بہت سرل لگتی ہے لیکن ماس میجرمنٹ کی تکنیک کی کافی جو ہے کٹھن ہوتی ہے جس سے کہ اس کی موسٹ ایکوریسی کا میجرمنٹ کیا جا سکے جو ہے اس کے لیے تمام انسرٹنٹی کے فیکٹرز ہوتے ہیں ان چیزیں ہوتی ہیں ایکوریسی آف بیلنس ہوتا ہے ایکوریسی آف ویٹس ہوتا ہے ایکوریسی آف انوائرمنٹ ہوتا ہے ٹمپریچر ہوتا ہے تمام چیزیں ہوتی ہیں جس پر جو ہے یہ چیزوں کا آپ کام کر سکتے ہیں آپ کو یہ بتانا بہت ضروری ہے کہ یہ جو مائکرو لیول کے بیلنسز ہوتے ہیں ایون یدی آپ گراؤنڈ لیول پر اس کو استھاپت کرتے ہیں اور پورا کوئی کہتا ہے کہ آپ اس کو فرسٹ فلور پر لائیے اور وہاں میجرمنٹ کر کے دکھلائیے تو آپ پائیں گے کہ اس کے ویلوز میں جو ہے بہت ڈفرینس آ جاتا ہے تو ایک گریوٹی کا ایک بہت بڑا فیکٹر ہوتا ہے یدی آپ ایک پردیس سے دوسرے پردیس میں بھی لے کے جاتے ہیں تو وہاں پر بھی اس کی کیلیبریشن کی چنوتی آتی ہے اور جب کیلیبریشن کی چنوتی آتی ہے تو وہاں پر ایکوریسی آف ماس مطلب ویٹ کی بہت ضرورت ہوتی ہے تو یہ چیزیں بہت مہتوپورن ہیں جیسے کوئی بیلنس آپ کا ودیش سے چاہے جرمنی سے آتا ہو بریٹین سے آتا ہو امیرکا سے آتا ہو سوئٹزرلینڈ سے آتا ہو تو آپ یہ نہیں کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ یہ جو ہے بہت کریکٹ ہے ہاں یہ ہے کہ اس کی ٹیکنالوجی بہت اچھی ہے لیکن آنے کے بعد بھی آپ کس طرح کے ماس سے اس کا کیلیبریشن کرتے ہیں اس کے انصار ہی اس کا ریزلٹ جو ہے دکھائی پڑے گا تو اس دشا میں آر ایس ایل بہت بڑا اپنا یوگدان سمے سمے پر دیتی رہتی ہیں اور امید ہے کہ اپنے جو ہے سراہنی کاروں کے مادم سے آر ایس ایل احمد آباد اور ہماری ادرس آر ایس ایس کی لیبورٹری دیس کے مارک درسن میں دیس کے آگے بڑھانے میں اپنا کام کرتی رہیں گی اور جو سہیوگ کی ضرورت ہے ڈپارٹمنٹ کے لیے وہ آپ جو ہے سمیہ سمیہ پر بتا میں جو ہے جس سے کی ڈپارٹمنٹ آپ کو وہ سویدھا پروائیٹ کر سکے اور آپ کی ساتھ جڑا رہ سکے بہت بہت دھنیواد جو ہے مسٹر جولین لات آف تھانکس ٹو یو دیٹ یو ہیو کم ٹو رام جرنی یو ہیو ایون دو کنیکٹڈ اینڈ یو ویل گیو دا لیکچر آن دیس بیری ایسو and you know the importance of mass and then how it is connected with the balances if the mass is not very accurate then the balances will be not accurate you know that very point very well so i hope that uh, this seminars will work on that very issue that how to connect the mass with the precision electronic balances thanks to all thanks to all my participant asutosh ji julian ji and other indian manufacturers and participants uh, i hope that this seminar will be successful and will bring some things for nation a lot of thanks Thank, thank you. you sir thank you very much sir thank you for your kind words sir and uh, actually sir this is just a start we have to continue this type of uh, seminars at least for uh, we, only for non automatic making instruments i think that for every saturday we have to take for 3 to 6 months to just have an understanding of these weighing machines in india now sir i have uh, we have with us dr gautam mandal he is a he is a non well known scientist from the csir national physical laboratory which is nmi of india he is the senior principal scientist and head of mass metrology in india international physical laboratory he is working in mass volume density viscosity from since 
from NPL. Now he is also the deputy quality manager of CSR NPL, who is looking after the whole the whole system of accreditation, peer assessment, etc. in the country. Sir, so I will now I will in place of taking more time, I will request Dr. Mandal to kindly uh, start uh, give us uh, give us the knowledge or the information which can help us. Dr. Mandal, sir, should I sh share the presentation? Ah, please. Am, am I audible? Yeah, can yeah, you can yes, do it you are from your side or not? Uh, this is not possible to uh, share. There is a uh, link is not active actually. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just a minute. I'm doing it. Is my screen visible now? It is visible. It is visible, sir. Please continue. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. So, first of all, thank you. Uh, thanks to organizer and especially uh, to Asutosh ji for giving me opportunity for this uh, presentation uh, lecture. Uh, this topic is basically calibration of owing uh, balances, and uh, I will cover the basically testing part, not the testing. Just I click to show the hierarchy of mass standard and the traceability. A uh, few points already Dixie sir has uh, pointed out and rightly pointed out. Just I would like to mention that uh, traceability is very important and this is heart of the measurement. If traceability is not there or uh, traceability is broken, this measurement is not valid. And uh, uh, you might be aware or some of you uh, might be already aware that uh, now uh, redefinition has come definition of the kilogram has changed from 20th May 2019. Uh, earlier, um, kilogram was mass of the international prototype kilogram, which is kept at BIPM, France. Whatever mass of the IPK, international prototype kilogram, this is after cleaning and washing, uh, it was considered as one kilogram with zero uncertainty. Now, 20th May 2019 onward, it has linked to Planck constant. Uh, this is physical constant of nature. So we, ha we are able to measure the kilogram uh, this is the IPK also. And after linking with uh, Planck constant, now uncertainty has reached to 40 microgram. And according to BIPM has uh, revised CMCs of uh, all the NMI, uh, according to their policy. And NPLI, CSI National Physical Laboratories, NMI of the country, National Physical, uh, National Metrology Institute of India. And uh, India signed uh, meter convention in uh, uh, 1957, and we got this copy. This we got national prototype of the kilogram. This is a copy number 57. Uh, this is single piece. Uh, this is a unique number in the world, and also it is maintained at NPLI because this is the NMI of the country. And every 10 years we send this copy to uh, BIPM for the recalibration. Since it is a national property and uh, this is only one kg, it is not uh, solved purpose of all the nominal values because. For day-to-day -day activities, we need uh, various nominal values from milligram to gram, kilogram, even few tons. It is not possible to compare uh, or uh, measure every uh, weights against NPK. So that's why we established at NPL is various levels. This is uh, our transfer standard, working standard. And after that, uh, being an NMI, we have responsibilities to maintain the weights and measures system of the country according to weights and measures act. Uh, this is time to time revised. This is currently, this version is 2009. And we provide, this is by law, we provide traceability to the RRSS. And every three years, uh, RRSS send their weight box to uh, NPL and we calibrate it. After that, uh, further they disseminate to uh, state level, district level, and uh, up to the soft floor. And another uh, responsibility of the NPL I is to provide the traceability to the accredited laboratories or the strategic sector like ISRO, Bhava Atomic Research Center, DAE, Atomic, uh, Department of Atomic Energy to maintain the quality system. So basically, NPL has responsibility to maintain both quality and the quantity. Uh, so this is a very important role for NPLI. So when we establish this uh, traceability or we uh, use the uh, compare our weights, we use 
uh, we uh, use electronic balances. We need suitable electronic uh, balances. And according to ISO 8655, uh, uh, for the piston operated pipette, or uh, uh, usually it is known as micro pipette, uh, balances are used as a standard because, in that case, in case of volume, even in case of glassware also, according to ISO 4787, balances uh, we take direct away in case of volume. So, in that case, it is very important to know the errors of the or uncertainty of the balance prior to use. And according to the standard ISO 8655, expanded uncertainty should not be more than six times the resolution uh, for this respective range. So prior use, we should have uh, uh, error in various information like errors or uncertainty of this respective weighing instrument. Before calibration or during calibration, we sh uh, should take a few precautions. An area which is free from the vi uh, vibration or excessive air current uh, where changes in temperature, relative humidity are minimal is selected. So balances, wing balances should not be placed just uh, under the split AC or just before the or near the window AC. So you will find that balance is uh, not stable. So you have to select the space where air current is, uh, effect is minimal. Even vibration also prior to know, we should uh, have the prior uh, knowledge about this vibration, we should have data. The balance uh, should be placed on the study stone table or we can use the anti-vibration table also. Uh, this is depending on the resolution of the weighing balances. Uh, even in case of high, very high re resolution uh, balances like we have uh, vacuum mass comparator. Uh, in that case, uh, we have uh, prepared uh, the concrete foundation uh, for uh, installation of this uh, weighing balance. Uh, because resolution is 0.1 microgram in one kg, this is uh, saturated net. Floor should be rigid and preferably be ground floor or basement is also uh, okay because uh, to resist uh, from the vibration or any other uh, influencing factors. Uh, sorry. And high resolution balances must also be relabeled using a label indicator each time they are moved to the different location. When it is moved to from uh, relocate from one location to other location, it always it should be checked. From the, uh, there is a uh, indicator, a spirit label is used and uh, we can uh, check uh, this uh, label is okay or not using the spirit label. And balance should be calibrated at site as Bixisar has mentioned there as uh, G factor. Sir. Uh, so, and this is a policy of NABL also is mobile and according to the same reason balance, uh, this mobile facility is not allowed in case of balance calibration is concerned. Uh, in general, we use various uh, terminology in case of weighing balances, semi uh, uh, micro balance, micro balance, ultra micro balance, uh, analytical balance. But according to uh, YML R76, there are four accuracy classes, special, high, medium, and ordinary. These are similar like that. This four is uh, not Roman four. This is like that. And this is uh, used uh, on the tag of the equipment and in the standard is used like that. One, two, three, four. And these are basically classified based on the verification scale interval. And unit is same as mass unit, it's a milligram, gram, microgram, kilogram, whatever is according to resolution. And these are uh, basically uh, table. This is provided uh, in the standard YMLR76. Uh, if E value is, uh, uh, if resolution of the balance is less than or equal to one milligram, any balance less than or equal to one milligram is uh, e value is one milligram, always. Actually, in uh, most of the cases, it is provided by the manufacturer and they can select from D to 10D. And uh, if I'm not wrong in uh, case of legal methodology is uh, concerned, uh, uh, where balances are used for the uh, commercial application, huh? E value is compuls compulsory to uh, provide by the manufacturer and it is mentioned in the tag. Am I right, Asutaji? Yes, sir, you are 100% correct. So it is a uh, responsibility of the manufacturer to provide the uh, E value. If it is not provided in some uh, cases, then we consider as e equal to D, but uh, there is other requirements also. But in case of class one is concerned, uh, E value is always one milligram. Uh, why we need this E value, verification scale interval? Basically, it is purpose is to calculate the maximum permissible error. Until or unless we know the MPE, 
we are not able to judge this uh, weighing instruments are suitable for our intended use or not so prior to use we should know how much the error and it is fulfilling our requirements or not so in case of class 1 we know the e value is 1 mg so that means 50 mg uh, gram 50000 mg or up to 50 gram our M, uh, is mp is 0.5 mg then 50 gram to 200 gram is 1 mg and above 200 gram is 1.5 mg so likewise uh, for other accuracy classes if we know the e value easily we can calculate the mp when we know the maximum permissible error mp then we can calculate or we, we can select the standard weights because before calibrating our balance we should select the suitable weight, uh, weights yeah. which weights are suitable for the calibration of the balance first criteria is uh, that the metrological requirements of the yml arc equivalent should meet of this weight and there are other criteria this shall not have error greater than one third of mp of the instrument of applied load and if it is belong to e2 or better means e1 class if you are using the e1 class or e2 class weights in that case uncertainty should not be more than one third of the mp so just i'm showing one example in case of class one instrument for 50 gram weight from earlier table already we have calculated mp is 0.5 milligram so that means 1.5 uh, one third of mp is 0.16 milligram so both the cases this is one third of mp and in case of e1 and e2 uncertainty should be less than equal to plus minus 0.16 milligram so this is a clear in case of f1 or i mean uh, e2 or better means this is applicable for f1 or other accuracy classes lower accuracy classes in that case error should be uh, less than equal to 0.16 milligram that means just uh, i like to show using this uh, graphical presentation this is our mp 0.5 milligram plus and uh, minus and one third is 0.16 in case of f1 or f2 if our mass value of the weight is lie within this range green range then only we can use this weight for the calibration of the balance a class one balance actually although as per ymlr triple one our permiss uh, error limit is up to 0.2 plus or minus 0.2 but according to r76 that uh, weight cannot be used for the calibration of class one instrument if our mass value is between red and blue zone this although it is meeting the requirements of f1 class but it is not suitable for the user uh, the calibration of the class one instrument so uh, this is a very important thing we should know which uh, standard weights are suitable for the calibration of the weighing balance of the various accuracy classes uh, just as a case study i would uh, like to uh, show a few tests uh, uh, assuming that this is our uh, specifications, one kg capacity balance, uh, minimum capacity is defined uh, 0.2 gram, readability 0 0.01 gram or 10 milligram. Assuming that E value was not given, this is equal to D, and repeatability or standard deviation was provided, linearity, deep, all these are provided. Now, the weighing performance test, or it is also called linearity test. Since uh, R76 does not use the terminology linearity, so that's why I have not used here, but actually basically this is the linearity test. In this case, we test uh, from zero to maximum capacity, and this should be progressively increasing and progressively decreasing. And for the each test, uh, during the test, we should uh, note down the temperature relative humidity the pressure. Actually, there are various uh, tests, but uh, I am showing one only three tests. Those are directly uh, affecting the mass metrology. And as per standard, there uh, should be at least, uh, this balance should be tested uh, for at least 10 loads. So selected uh, 10 uh, loads is a minimum capacity, maximum capacity, and where uh, this uh, MP were changed. This is at 50 gram and the 200 gram. And other loads were selected according to our experience and uh, to check the equal uh, interval or so. Now, initially, assuming that uh, most of the cases, you will find that uh, in initial uh, case, this is zero, or we can use the TR key or any other mechanism to uh, make it zero. But in case, just I'm showing uh, various possibilities. 
if even 0.01% chance is there, if there is not uh, possible to make it zero. In that case, what we have to do in uh, no load condition, we have to note down this error because this value will affect in our subsequent measurements. So first we have to place that 200 milligram weight on the pan. Uh, it will be placed at the center. Some uh, errors, please forgive me. Uh, so these are note down uh, after stabilization 0.01. Then after that, we have to use some additional load. Additional load or these are called the sensitivity weight. So additional load should be one tenth of D. In this case, resolution is 10 milligram. So one tenth is one milligram. According to YML or triple one, lowest nominal value is one milligram. So if resolution of the balance is lower than 10 milligram, uh, we cannot use uh, this additional load. So in that case, it is not required. That's why I'm selected 10 milligram to uh, show all the possibilities. So first we have to place the one milligram. Suppose there is no change in the reading, then two milligram, no change. Two plus one, three, no change. Two plus two, four, no change. Suppose just after putting five milligram, next reading has come. And it is understood that if earlier reading was 0 0.20, then next reading will be 0 0.21 because this is I plus D, if resolution is 0 0.01. So no need to note down this reading, just we have to note down this value of uh, mass of nominal value for which we, uh, this value has come. So after applying five milligram, next uh, reading has come. So that's why we have mentioned here five milligram. So next time, just we have to remove the additional load, but main load still on the pan. And next load, main load is 500 milligram. So first we have to place the 500 milligram and remove earlier one so standard says this is a progressively increasing or gradually increasing so that's why first we have to place the next weight and remove the earlier one and after that uh, similar fashion we have to apply the additional load one milligram two milligram three milligram like that i am not uh, continuing all these things uh, due to time constraints so likewise just we have to place the next weight two uh, gram next time and remove the 500 milligram like that we have to go up to maximum and return back to no load condition and after that we have to calculate the error and this is the formula uh, already given in the standard i plus half e minus delta l minus l just uh, putting the data we can calculate the error now we have to calculate the corrected error because at no load condition there was some error so we have to correct it so after applying correction this is our value and all the values should be within the maximum permissible error if it is not within the permissible error, then as per the legal metrology, this is considered as a fail. But uh, when we talk about the scientific metrology, we don't uh, mention any pass or fail when we issue the certificate. Just we provide the values. Uh, this is the uh, error against the MP of this much. Let customer decide what to do. But in case of legal metrology, I think uh, uh, number of legal metrology officers are present here. So that's why I'm showing the both. Next one is the eccentricity test or authentic test. So usually this test is uh, uh, done at one third of the maximum load. And this is uh, divided into four segments. Is a visual inspection is sufficient, not uh, required to uh, use any sketch pen or something, any marking. Uh, you can do it, but not necessarily. So one third is not exactly one third, like uh, 333 gram, because standard says, if you use multiple use uh, multiple weight then unnecessary stacking should be avoided if we use 333 gram that means we have to use 200 gram plus 100 gram plus 20 gram plus 10 gram plus 2 gram plus 1 gram so unnecessary stacking uh, be there and if uh, somehow it is fall down then weight will be damaged and as well as balance also will damage so in that case we have selected 300 gram as close as possible to the one third not exactly one third but close to the one third Now, this is a divided into four segments. It is the center, then two, three, four, five. Then at the center, you can check the location one, two, three, four, five. Then again, center, then five, four, three, two, one. So this is the first, this is a clockwise direction, then anti clockwise or counter clockwise direction. Now, first, we have to place the weight at the center. 
So as per standard, smaller weight should be placed on the top of the larger one. But uh, we have to be very careful uh, because there should not be any friction. Otherwise, uh, uh, for the long run, uh, this, there should be some scratches and it will affect the uh, stability, long-term stability of the weight. So we have to be very careful. And after the similar fashion, we have to place the additional load. One, two, just. Suppose after uh, applying three milligram, now next reading has come. So there, here we have mentioned 0 0.003 gram or three milligram. So in this case, we remove all the weights because these are independent in each location. Then next, next time, first we have to place in the next segment at the center of this segment. Then this observation is noted down 300.03. And similar way, we have to apply the additional load. Just directly, I'm showing here for the time constraint, but uh, we have to apply. Uh, likewise, we have applied earlier one, two, three, four, like that. So similar way, two, three, four, five, clockwise and counterclockwise, we have to do. And again, we have to calculate the error using the same formula we used for the weighing performance test and then corrected error. This all the errors should be within the MP. Otherwise, it's considered as a fail. Now I'm showing here scientific methodology part also. This is a corrected error, what we have. Then we calculate the mean value because we have three observations at location one. This is a mean value at location one, then mean value of location two, three, four, five. Our main aim is to place the weight at the center. So how much deviation from the center is our eccentricity error. So we calculate from center to other four locations. So these are the values at location two, three, four, and five. So which one is the maximum? It is our eccentricity error. It is mentioned in the certificate. And also we calculate the, uh, this, use this value to calculate the uncertainty due to eccentricity error. And the repeatability test to calculate the standard deviation. Usually this test is uh, done at half load or 50% load and the 100% load. So since our balance is of one kg, so half is at half load or 500 gram, a single weight is repeated 10 times. Just I'm not showing here additional load, this is the same concept. Just we have to repeat it 10 times and we have to note down the observation. Then we have to calculate the P here, not error. Here we calculate the P because corrected observation. And this maximum minimum deviation should be within the MP. Here, in case uh, in case of legal methodology is concerned, but in case of scientific methodology is concerned, we calculate the standard deviation. And finally, we calculate the type A uncertainty, which is uh, further uh, cal to calculate the combined standard uncertainty, the expanded uncertainty. So repeatability is very important, and it is applicable for every parameter, not only in case of mass. This is applicable for all the parameters. And this is uh, same for one kg or full load condition. Okay. So we have to repeat uh, this test 10 times using the same load and we have to calculate the M, uh, this deviation and if this M, uh, value is within the MP. So due to time constant, uh, this time I have not added the uncertainty part. So just the test uh, of uh, various uh, metrological uh, tests, those are directly affecting the mass metrology of the calibration of the weights I have added here. So thank you very much. If you have any queries or question, so you can ask or even uh, you can send me uh, through email also. I will be happy to help. Thank you very much. Thanks. To thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your kind presentation. Actually, we are all aware that nowadays in India, you are at the top position for the mass. So thank you very much for sparing your time, thank you. Thank you. research time with us. And certainly we will take your help in regularly in the in future also, because we are uh, planning to conduct these type of workshops uh, regularly so that our manufacturers and the industries and our officers can understand how these type of testing and calibration can be done. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be happy to help. No, it is my, I would, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You. So it is a great pleasure to see uh, my old friend, Mr. Carl Hinch. Thank you very much, sir. You are here. Santoshi, please, Kalinj, share the screen. 
Sir, uh, Kalin Saab has studied his uh, mechanics IIT at the University of Kiba. He worked in different as technical manager for check weighing and detection. And since 2012, he is head of Sartorius Metallurgy Department. I met you many in many various meetings in OML and others. And now I uh, understand that uh, we will take your help for this DCC, Digital Calibration Certificate, because I know you are a pioneer of all these things. And it is very important for every metallurgy system. So now I would like to give you kindly, uh, kindly do something for the India and kindly let us know what uh, are the calibration and verification. I know that you are authorized by OML for OML testing, as well as you are being authorized by different uh, European countries for verification and stamping of being and measuring instruments. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to welcome you. And I'm sorry, we are not physically here, but sir, please, uh, now, uh, Mr. Kali, please, sir. Yeah, thank you very much for these friendly words. It's really a pleasure for me to uh, meet you again. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to support you in India from Germany. <laughs> okay, I have a, a small introduction uh, of Sartorius first. Uh, I hope it works. Can you see the screen? Yeah, we can see your screen, sir, please. Okay. So it works. So, um, Sartorius, some words about Sartorius. Sartorius has a history of more than 150 years. Uh, Sartorius founded in 1870 uh, by Florent Sartorius. And he, is, he developed a weighing technology that reduces the time for the beam stability. And uh, this, is, this is based on aluminum. It's still the, the material we work with. In 1927, the Nobel Prize laureate uh, Richard Sigmondi expands the Sartorius products portfolio with membrane filters. And these both uh, parts are still our main or our, our core businesses in, in two divisions. It's uh, lab products and services where we have surveying instruments and the bioprocess solution where we still have our uh, membranes. Um, when I uh, when, when we look to uh, Sartorius, uh, the fiscal year of 2021, the company earned sa sales revenue of about uh, 3.5 billion euros. And at the end of 2021, we had nearly 14,000 people employed in the group. Appro approximately 60 manufacturing and sales sites, uh, and we serve customers around the globe. So the Sartorius Group is a leading international partner of life science research and biopharmaceutical industry with innovative laboratory instruments consumables. The group's F, uh, lab products and service division concentrates on serving the needs of laboratories, performing research and quality control of pharma and biopharma companies, and those of academic research institutes. The bioprocess solution division with its broad product portfolio focus on single use uh, solutions, help customers to manufacture biotech medi medications and vaccines safely and efficiently. Okay. So when we go to. When we go to our, our topic. Um, We have a, in, in, in Europe, we have a, a two tier system. I think it's different to India. Uh, in, in, we have one on one hand, so the field of health, penalties, tax, and all the other things you have to use verified instruments. And on the other hand, when you are on, on a production process, uh, control some things, you don't use uh, verified instruments. Then it's very important to have calibrated systems so that you really know exactly what's happened uh, in this, uh, with these instruments, is, uh, what's the uncertainty and so on. So that's the reason 
we divide uh, or we have verified instruments in, in place whenever it's really important for, for the consumer, for the protection of the consumer, when it's a matter of life and limb or justice. So uh, my uh, presentation will go about legal metrology in Europe, how it works in, in, in Europe. Module B, Module D, it's uh, different uh, parts of uh, type examination and quality control in the production of a manufacturer. Then the single market Europe and national responsibilities because we are 27 countries and how looks it for inspection. So legal methodology in Europe is based on OML R76. So it's a, it's a recommendation, it's not a law, but it's a recommendation on this uh, uh, tools or this uh, recommendation as uh, the NAVI directive, non-automatic weighing directive is based. And this is a 2014-31 EU. Uh, uh, this is a law which uh, allows manufacturers uh, depending on, on all the regulations and, and requirements to bring instruments directly to the market without any verification. So the manufacturer is responsible for the, uh, for the, the assessment he has to do. And then the technical implementation is done by the EN45501. It's a standard for non-automatic weighing instrument, meteorolog meteorological aspects of non-automatic weighing instruments. And uh, it's declared as a normative document. That means when you fulfill the requirements in the EN45501, you fulfill the requirements of the non-automatic weighing directive. And that helps a lot of manufacturers to fulfill the requirements. So when, when we go to module B, it's uh, the EU type examination. We start normally in a, in a project by a manufacturer with the idea we have a project, we have development of the prototype, we have production, production type afterwards, and then we start the EU examination certificate. So we have a kickoff gate when we have a good idea and then we have to check uh, what's happened with OML and Velmec. Velmec is the Western Europe Legal Metrology Organization, which try to manage um, all the different countries that they have the same view on the things to harmonize the parts. And uh, we look to the NAVI directive and to the EN45501. Then we have a money gate. We uh, develop the instruments. We have a pilot gate. And then afterwards, uh, when we have the production type completed and we fulfill all the requirements, we go for a EU type examination certificate. We apply with a, a PDB or with LNE or NMO or some, some other metrology institute. And then we, we have, when we got the, the type examination certificate, uh, the next module starts, namely uh, uh, it's module D, conformity to type based on the quality assurance of the production process. So we have uh, each year uh, an audit by uh, authorities which checks the quality and the processes we fulfill in the production. So that means we um, have a pilot production, we have to release it in, in, in our uh, responsibility and we fulfill the OML R76 and other uh, condition tests we have to do. We create procedures to ensure the conformity to type. We have this installed in our uh, workshop. And then we come to the serial production after the launch gate and then uh, we have continuously uh, checks one each each instrument is test of conformity and uh, on the other hand we also have uh, internal product audits that all the requirements are continuously during a whole life of an instrument is fulfilled 
These are the both uh, modules we have to fulfill. One hand is the EU type examination certificate. And on the other hand, when you have this uh, type examination certificate, you have to fulfill module D that all the quality assurance uh, are really works well. So when then with such instruments we developed and produced, we can uh, deliver directly to the single market of Europe. Uh, that means we can place the instrument and the user can use this instrument directly without any other issue. They don't need any authorities, nothing. It's it, you can use it and work with. Uh, that works very well in, in EU and also in Switzerland and, and, and Norway. And uh, But when it's placed in the market, the national law uh, is responsible afterwards. And this is a, a different thing when you uh, go to the market. So that means you have to follow also all different Europe, uh, European uh, laws. When you have placed the instrument in the market, you have to follow this too. And you, have, you can find it in Wellmec, the, the Wellmec committee, and uh, you find here such regulations which are quite different from country to country. And this is a, a really a high uh, uh, requirement for, for us when we are global in the market. So in France, for example, uh, we have uh, the possibility to verify instruments in the market. Um, we have to follow ISO 70020 if we are accredited to, to do this. And we uh, verify instruments, we repair instruments uh, in France. That's no issue. When we go to Germany, in Germany, we are not allowed to verify instruments. So there is also a two years uh, verification validity. And after two years, the authority comes to the instrument and check it again if it fulfills all the requirements. And uh, we are allowed to repair the instruments when something is wrong and put on a, a sticker that it be repaired. We as a repair uh, company can do it. But within six weeks, the authority has to check the instruments again. So that means uh, the European harmonized and nationally regulated uh, uh, topics work close together. We have to place in the market, follow the European uh, requirements and regulations. And on the other hand, we have also to fulfill the requirements of each nation in Europe. Nevertheless, Sartorius uh, try to manage it in, in a way that we really uh, uh, can do it easy with the inspection all over Europe. So we, we, we try to find out what is uh, harmonized and it's clear, it's, uh, it's, uh, all the technical requirements are harmonized because they are based on the OML R76 or on the EN45501. So we can focus on the technical requirements. This is always the same. But all around, so the organization looks different. In some countries, you need ISO 70020, in other countries, 70025, and in other countries, uh, nothing. <laughs> so you are always in a different situation. But when you have uh, implement such a system according you fulfill all these this requirements of ISO 9001, 70025 and 70020, then uh, I think you are very well prepared to fulfill all the management systems you use. And you have to train all your personnel that they know what they are doing. And uh, then you can fulfill the different responsibilities with national specifications. Uh, so you are allowed to do periodic re-verification, for example, in, in Austria, in Belgium, in France, in Italy. Uh, you can also do the verification after repair in these countries, but the inspection after repair, uh, you are only allowed in Switzerland, Germany, Poland, and Czech, Czechoslovakia uh, with um, 
afterwards the authority has to come to check it again. But this is the difference of countries in Europe. So uh, when we do the inspection, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Gantam Mandal explained it very well. We have visual inspections according to R76 or 45501. It's described there. And we have to do also the meteorological inspection according to different uh, chapters. And uh, this is all described in R76 and uh, EN45501. So when we when we do on-site uh, all the tests, we we have to focus on on error of indication, accuracy of zero setting, tear devices, repeatability, extended loading, and uh, this comes into such an inspection report, uh, which covers all the different measurements on the second page. And on the first page, uh, the description of the, the instrument, what is it, and the customer is described, and, and, and. And you will find an overview of all the tests which are done, and if they are successful. And this, this report is sent in some countries to the authorities, in some countries only for you, that you have the, the base, that you have done the, the tests always, uh, always correct. And uh, in some countries, you have to bring it into a uh, uh, database of the authority. This is done by a program with the software. It's uh, done by Sartorius. And uh, it follows exactly the, the, the tests explained by Mr. Mandal before. I think that's my part. Hope when you have some questions, you are welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, we have requested all the participants to share their questions in th either through chat box or immediately after this uh, presentations. We'll request all of them to speak if they want to say something or they want to ask something. Thank you very much, sir. As I know, you are the wonderful speaker and uh, having uh, vast knowledge and experience in these weighing machines. Basically, you are the, I can say, you are the forefather of this whole system. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us this opportunity and, and enlighten us on this. Uh, in a very complicated and uh, uh, useful topic, which is not automatic being instrument. But sir, I will request you to come regularly in the another uh, conferences also, so that we can do the whole exercise. Today it is just a uh, one, just just a show how we, you are you are doing. But actually, practically, how you are doing? What are the certificates you are issuing? Because this certificate which you have shown, it is very much required for we people also. How to fill up, how to prepare. So, sir, we will request you again and again and kindly uh, partner us to do this, uh, to, to facilitate us or to help us. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I will request Dr. Julian. Dr. Julian received his PhD in physics from the University of Gottingen, Germany in 2008. He worked from 2008 to 2016 at uh, and PTB Germany. Everybody knows PTB Germany is the basically, uh, you know, when we say it is a mother of all uh, uh, metrology, legal metrology, assessment, all come from the PTB Germany. And uh, since 2016, he is a scientist in the metrology department of uh, Sartorius and 2018. Now he's deputy head of Sartorius accredited calibration laboratory for weighing instruments and bars. He is a co-author of several scientific publications and recently a series of white papers about testing and calibration of weighing instruments and is currently leading a working group of German associations of accredited calibration laboratories. In India, we call it NABL. In Germany, we call it DKD for the definition of good practices, example of a digital calibration certificate for weighing instruments. Now, I will request Dr. Julian to kindly sir, kindly let us know what, what else we have to do. Dr. Julian, please, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Agarwal, for this kind introduction and generally, of course, for the invitation and for the honorable uh, opportunity to speak at this event. It's my pleasure to present you a brief overview of calibration of weighing instruments. Can you see my screen? No, nope. not yet. OK, so give me a second. Oh, sorry, I forgot to share. So now you can see it, correct? 
Yes, yes please. We can see that. We can see now. Thank you, sir. So, um, yeah, as mentioned, it's my pleasure to give you a brief overview about the calibration of weighing of instruments. And this, at least in Germany and most parts of Europe, um, at least for accredited calibrations, always goes hand in hand with the calibration guide Euromit CG18. So just to um, have a quick throwback um, on the definition, definition of a calibration, uh, I guess you all know that the calibration is the determination of the deviation between the measured value and the true value. So if we consider this for weighing instruments, it's quite simple in general. You put on a weight on the balance where you know the respective weight, you read the indication of the balance, and then you just simply calculate the error of indication, which is the difference between these two values. So generally a very easy concept. Um, just to highlight this, because um, in, in the, the European quality infrastructure, this has to be considered completely separated from legal mythology. So for calibrations, there are no legal requirements, no laws. The main purpose of a calibration is to provide traceability to national or international standards. And finally, of course, to the definition of the kilogram that Mr. Mandal mentioned. Uh, calibration per se also does not do any conformity statements if something is passed or failed. Um, this is not the primary purpose of a the calibration. There's also no required calibration interval by law, but both of the last points are in the user's responsibility. The user has to define tolerances or specifications that shall be met, and he has to define how often a balance or any measuring instrument shall be calibrated. Now, um, coming to the mentioned calibration guide, that's the Euromed calibration guide number 18, and we briefly call it just the CG18. This is the respective cover sheet. And if you have a look at the version information, the current version, version 4.0, is or has been published end of 2015. So it's a quite stable calibration guide. And as you can see from the authorship, um, we, as one of the main manufacturer, were involved in, in writing this um, guide, but also, of course, our main competitor. I should not hide this and several persons from European um, metrology institutes like the NPL in UK, um, the Italian Metrology Institute, and several others. Um, the publisher, Euromet, it's the association of European metrology institutes, so PTB, NPL, uh, INRIM, all these uh, institutes from Europe. But which, what is quite important, the, the guideline itself is not only recognized and accepted in Europe, but more or less worldwide, worldwide. So especially in Northern and Southern America, it is well accepted. And also in Asia, for example, we provide um, calibrations according to this guide in Japan, China, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and also in India. And what is quite nice, the guide itself is can be downloaded free of charge from the UMED website. So no, no money to pay to read it. Um, I just, for the sake of time, give you an overview of the table of contents of this guide. And you see it's a quite long guide. It has about 120 pages. But you see the measurements itself are described on approximately three pages. The majority of this guide is about calculation of the uncertainty. So this is about, I don't know, 20 pages. And then there's a large annex with further calculations and examples. So don't be afraid of this guide. Uh, the main part is just additional information. About the measurements, I will just give that very briefly because Mr. Mandal gave a very nice uh, explanation of several types of measurement and the measurements for the calibration are not exactly the same, but they are very similar. So I will just mention that for a calibration, you usually have to perform three measurements, which is the repeatability, 
with a load of approximately 50% of the maximum capacity of the instrument and at least five repetitions. The eccentricity measurement with a load of approximately at least one third of, of the maximum um, capacity. And then an error of indication measurement with at least five different test loads that of course have to be calibrated so you can calculate the deviation from the calibrated value of the weights. This is what it would like on or what it does like uh, look like on, on one of our calibration certificates to give the measurement results. So you have the results of the repeatability measurement, the eccentricity measurement, and which is the formal calibration result, the results of the error of indication measurement, where you have for different test loads, at least five test loads, mentioned the indication, the error, which is just the difference between these two, and the uncertainty of this error. And as mentioned, that's quite a sophisticated um, calculation of the uncertainty, so I'm not bothering you with formulas, but um, just to mention the contributions that are taken into account for calculating the uncertainty, uh, rounding at zero, so the digital step has to be considered, the rounding at load, the repeatability and eccentricity, and basically this is why you have to measure it in advance because you have to take it into account for the uncertainty. Of course, the calibration uncertainty of the weights that you use and buoyancy of the weights that might change depending on the air density, air convection if the weights are not perfectly acclimatized, and of course, if you use the weights for a longer time, um, the possible change of the weight since the last calibration has to be taken into account. So all these contributions are calculated um, and then are given on the calibration certificate. So far, this is um, more or less like for any calibration of any measurement device. So it has some drawbacks. Actually, as for all calibrations, the error of indication and its uncertainty are only valid at the time of the calibration. They are only given for a few test loads, namely the five ones I've shown. And of course, the user, the end user, would have to correct the readings or the indications of the balance with the determined errors. So the CGA team has a nice concept and an additional information, which is one of the particularities of this calibration guide. Um, Generally, the user of the measuring instrument is responsible to determine the measurement uncertainty of his measurements. And for example, Mr. Mandal mentioned that for calibrating pipettes, there are requirements in the standard on the measurement uncertainty. So the user has to calculate or to determine the measurement uncertainty of his weighing. And the CGA team gives nicely and kindly a very good and somewhat sophisticated description of how to determine the measurement uncertainty for the user. And at least the bigger calibration laboratories usually state this uncertainty in use on their calibration certificates, at least we do. And um, the advantages are that this uncertainty in use is valid for any indication or reading that the user does, so any weighing he performs. And it also includes the error of indication. So the user has not to correct his readings by the determined error. Um, I'm bothering you a little bit with the formula. So this is the general formula of how this uncertainty in use is calculated and don't worry about the formula. Um, I will explain the terms. So of course, when you use a weighing instrument, you have to take into account the uncertainty of a reading Again, the, the rounding at zero, the rounding at load, the standard deviation and eccentricity. The error of indication and its uncertainty that have been determined during the calibration. And of course, the user might use um, the, the, or will use the device at a later time. And there might, for example, be possible changes of the device usually, for example, due to temperature changes. That is taken into account in this contribution. 
And also the user might use the, way, the, the weighing instrument slightly different than how it was used during the calibration. And this is also taken into account, for example, if the user tears the balance, um, a respective contribution is taken into account. So quite a complicated calculation in the background, but the nice thing is, of course, a high quality calibration lab will provide you this uncertainty of the weighing re result on the calibration certificate, simply in the shape of a straight line equation. We additionally give some a table with example calculations, but the main result is the um, this equation. And the user can easily use it. So for example, if the user for this weighing instrument reads 123.4567 grams, he can put this value into this equation and calculate that the uncertainty for this result is um, approximately 0 0.9 milligrams, yeah? which would mean in the end that with a probability of approximately 95%, the true value is in the range reading minus uncertainty to reading plus uncertainty. You can easily Calculate that for every value, for example, with Excel or any calculation program, or you can, of course, have it more comfortable. You can let your weighing instrument calculate the uncertainty for you. So, for example, we provide with our premium series a Q app where the values from the certificate can be entered in this Q app. And afterwards, the balance will show you for each reading directly the uncertainty of this reading. So very comfortable, so you don't have to calculate for every single value. You get directly indicated the uncertainty of your wing. Um, if you're interested in this, we have a very nice white paper um, on this topic that you can download for free from our website. So you might find more details there. The second particularity of the Calibration guide number 18 is that it provides a good description how to calculate a minimum net weight from this uncertainty in use. So again, the uncertainty in use in absolute terms, that means grams or milligrams, is a straight line. But if you consider it as a relative term in percent, so you just divide the uncertainty by the respective load, you will get such a hyperbolic behavior of the relative uncertainty. And as you see, for small loads, the relative uncertainty increases to infinity, which means if you for your process or the end user for his process will accept a relative uncertainty of at maximum 1%, 2%, whatever, we can easily find one weight above which all relative uncertainties will be smaller, but below this minimum weight, all relative uncertainties would be bigger. So he will have to weigh in at least this amount to make sure his relative uncertainty is smaller than what he requires for his process. We usually give one example on our calibration certificates. So this is um, how you see it. If, for example, the user has a process accuracy requirement of 1% and he wants to multiply the relative uncertainty with an additional safety factor of three, this is the turquoise line, he will end up to have this amount, which is approximately 56 milligrams, that means if his process accuracy is 1% and his safety factor 3, he will have to weigh in at least 56 milligrams to make sure his process parameters are fulfilled. So this is just one example. We optionally, for example, provide um, a an, an, uh, so-called minimum net weight certificate with our calibration certificates, where we calculate this minimum net weight for more, namely 7, process accuracies and five safety factors that the user could have. So you will see, of course, depending on the process accuracy and the safety factor of the customer, the minimum net weight will differ. 
that's a very brief overview um, of this Euromed calibration guide number 18. Um, we provide actually quite a lot of white papers um, to, to explain more. And uh, for the sake of time, of course, I, I gave just a very brief overview. If you're interested, feel free to download our white, pipe, white papers from our uh, web page. They are all for free um, and might help you to understand more details. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your nice presentation. Certainly, it is a very big thing what you are discussing with us about the uh, uncertainty. Sir, I will take your pardon. I would like to speak something in Hindi also in our national language so that my all uh, manufacturers can also understand what we have discussed yet. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. But for we will continue to take your help regularly in the next meetings also. And we hope that uh, you will certainly teach us, let us know what are the things going on internationally. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Just like we have seen that in the legal methodology, we have seen that in the past, we have seen that in the past, we have As we see, we have discussed about this with uh, Dr. Mandel, who is from the National Physical Laboratory, and these two uh, senior scientists from PTB Germany or uh, from this uh, Sartorius. We have learned that uh, what are the things they are doing, what are the new guidelines, new guides they are following internationally. We have to see now. Abhi hume bhi India me usi tarikhe se aage jana hoga. Santosh ji, mera jara screen share karenge. Aisha ke Santosh ko phone karo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Santosh ji. I will take just five minutes to speak something about uh, the this legal methodology. आज का जो हमारा purpose था कि calibration और verification में किस तरीके से हमें calibration और verification करना है अपनी non automatic weighing instruments का मैं बहुत थोड़ा सा brief discuss करूँगा आपके साथ because you have learned from these two uh, these eminent speakers of the uh, of international repute I don't have to say anything after that सूरज को दिया दिखाने के बराबर होगा इन लोगों के बाद बोलना जैसा कि हमें पता है legal methodology का purpose ही केवल अपनी guarantee को बनाना है country के अंदर यदि आप one kg ले रहे हैं तो one kg है कि नहीं है ये responsibility है legal methodology के ऊपर हमारा आज की date में हम legal methodology act के अंदर हिंदुस्तान में काम कर रहे हैं कि क्या क्या लीगल मेटलॉजी में रिक्वायरमेंट है मुझे पता है कि थोड़ा सा टाइम ज्यादा हो गया हमारा उतना नहीं था परपस लेकिन फिर भी 5 मिनट के अंदर मैं इसको फिनिश करने की कोशिश करूंगा ये हमारे मैकेनिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हुआ करते थे क्योंकि सारे पुराने जो मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं हमारे वो सब जानते हैं कि किस तरीके से वेइंग और मेजिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट में डेवलपमेंट हुआ है टाइम के साथ-साथ अभी आज की डेट में ये जो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वेइंग बैलेंसर्स हैं इन्होंने सारा का सारा जो सिनेरियो है उसको चेंज कर दिया नाउ जनरल रूल बना है मैं आपको एक चीज बता दूं जो हम लोग लीगल मेटलॉजी में आपको सबको पता है वी आर द ओएमएल मेंबर कंट्री हम भी इंडिया में जो भी रिकमेंडेशंस ओएमएल का आता है उसी के अकॉर्डिंग अपने रूल्स बनाते हैं हमारे यहां सारा का सारा स्पेसिफिकेशंस जनरल रूल्स में दिए गए हैं जनरल रूल्स की बात करें या आर 76 की बात करें ये तीन चार पार्ट्स में डिवाइड किया गया है क्या टर्मिनोलॉजी है क्या मेटलॉजिकल रिक्वायरमेंट्स है मेटलॉजिकल रिक्वायरमेंट्स में बात करते हैं कितनी परमिसिबल एरर होगी डॉक्टर मंडल साहब ने ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन किया व्हाट विद द परमिसिबल एरर्स इसके बाद जो टेक्निकल रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं कैसे जीरो सेटिंग होगा टेल डिवाइसेस हैं ये सब इसमें डिस्कस करेंगे इसके बाद होता है एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव रिक्वायरमेंट्स मार्किंग कैसे करेंगे कैसे इसकी स्टैंपिंग होगी वो इसमें आता है इसके अलावा आता है मेटलॉजिकल कंट्रोल जैसे कि हमारे जो लीगल मेटलॉजी के ऑफिसर्स हैं वो इनिशियल वेरिफिकेशन करते हैं हर वेइंग और मेजिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स का और उसके बाद पीरियोडिकल वेरिफिकेशन होता है तो ये जो पार्ट्स है ये इसके अंदर आता है इसके अलावा जो 76 में या जनरल रूल्स में दिए गए हैं कुछ एनेक्सर्स हैं जो कि बताते हैं कि टेस्टिंग कैसे होती है ओएमएल में इसके अलावा हमें टेस्ट फॉर्मेट भी दिया गया है यू विल बी हैप्पी टू नो कि जितनी भी हमारे कंट्री में रिपोर्ट्स बनती हैं वो जो भी हम लोग रिपोर्ट्स पब्लिश करते हैं या बनाते हैं आरएसएल्स में वो सारी की सारी एज पर इंटरनेशनल फॉर्मेट्स होती हैं हम लोग पूरा ओएमएल के फॉर्मेट इंडिया पर ओएमएल रिकमेंडेशन है और इस इसी बात को हम इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे बोलते भी हैं और कहते भी हैं और लिखते भी हैं 
जो वेइंग और मेजिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट है ये है क्या बेसिकली यदि हम बात करें जो मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट है ये मास किसी बॉडी का निकालता है विद द हेल्प ऑफ द ग्रेविटी और जब हम उस बॉडी के ऊपर इसको प्लेस कर देते हैं तब ये मास हमारा इसमें निकल के आता है यदि हम बात करें इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स की ये यूज किए जा सकते हैं इसके अलावा क्वांटिटीज निकालने के अलावा मैग्नीट्यूड्स के लिए पैरामीटर्स जो और होते हैं या कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स के लिए भी जो डिफरेंट टाइप की इसमें मास को डिटरमिन करने के लिए यूज की जाती हैं जो मेथड ऑफ ऑपरेशन है वेइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट का ये बेसिकली ऑटोमेटिक हो सकता है और नॉन ऑटोमेटिक हो सकता है हम बात कर रहे हैं आज नॉन ऑटोमेटिक की देखिए जो कॉन्फ्रेंसेस हमने स्टार्ट किए हैं मुझे लगता है कि छह महीने के बाद यदि हम लगातार एवरी वीक इस तरह से करते रहेंगे तो मुझे लगता है हमारे देश में जो नॉन ऑटोमेटिक वे इंस्ट्रूमेंट बन रहे हैं उनमें बहुत सुधार आएगा कहां पर कमियां हैं कहां पर सुधार करना है केवल यही परपज है इस टाइप की कॉन्फ्रेंसेस को क्योंकि भारत सरकार इस तरह का प्रयास कर रही है कि किस तरीके से हम अपने एंटरप्रेन्योर्स को बढ़ा सकें हमारे देश में 130 करोड़ की जो पॉपुलेशन है उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट के साथ साथ कैसे हम इंटरनेशनल रिक्वायरमेंट्स को पूरा कर सकते हैं अच्छे टेक्निकली क्वालिफाइड और अच्छी क्वालिटी के इक्विपमेंट को देकर के यही परपज है मुझे लगता है आज हमारा भारत सरकार का एंड वी आर वर्किंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन यदि आप चेकिंग करते हैं जीरो की सेटिंग डिवाइस या जीरो सेटिंग डिवाइस यूज करते हैं तो वो सारे इसके एग्जांपल है नॉन ऑटोमेटिक वेइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट के इसमें आपको पता है कोई ऑपरेटर नहीं होता अपना इंस्ट्रूमेंट में वेट कर सकते हैं जो नॉन ऑटोमेटिक वेइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट है ये इक्विप्ड होता है विद एन इंडिकेटिंग डिवाइस इसके अंदर एक जो डिस्प्ले है वो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट है डिस्प्ले के बिना कोई भी नॉन ऑटोमेटिक वेइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट वर्क नहीं कर सकता या नहीं हो सकता प्रिंटर को हम लोग इंडिकेटिंग डिवाइस नहीं मानते ये उसका एक एडिशनल सब्सिड्यूट डिवाइस है जब ऑटोमेटिक की बात करते हैं तो ये एक प्री डिटर्मिन प्रोग्राम होता है इसके अंदर जैसे आपने देखा होगा जो फिलिंग मशीन है लिक्विड में लिक्विड सॉलिड को 100 ग्राम 200 ग्राम 100 लीटर एम एल सॉरी सौ एम या 200 सौ को रेगुलरली फिल करते रहते हैं इन द पैकेजेस दिस टाइप ऑफ वेइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स आर नोन एज ऑटोमेटिक हमारे पास बहुत सारे जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैं वो क्या है ग्रेजुएटेड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स है नॉन ग्रेजुएटेड है सेल्फ इंडिकेटिंग है सेमी सेल्फ इंडिकेटिंग है नॉन सेल्फ इंडिकेटिंग है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैं इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स जो होते हैं विद प्राइस सेल्स हो सकते हैं प्राइस कॉम्पिटिंग हो सकते हैं प्राइस लेबलिंग हो सकता है सेल्फ सर्विस इंस्ट्रूमेंट हो सकता है जो कि ऑपरेटर जो है उसको यूज करता है टेंट फॉर द कस्टमर मोबाइल इंस्ट्रूमेंट हो सकता है और पोर्टेबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट हो सकता है फॉर वेइंग रोड वेहीकल्स आज की डेट में आप देखते होंगे जहां पर भी हमारे जो टोल प्लाजाज है वहां पर सब जगह पर इन मोशन रोडवे ब्रिजेस लगे हुए हैं सो देट वी कैन चेक द वेट विच इज of the vehicle which is passing through it if the weight is more than the penalty is being laid on the uh, on the on the driver of the vehicle जैसा एक्यूरेसी क्लास की बात करें तो यहां पर हम इंडिया में चार टाइप की एक्यूरेसी क्लास की बात करते हैं वन टू थ्री एंड फोर इट इज इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड देखिए जो स्पेशल एक्यूरेसी नहीं वेरी हाई एक्यूरेसी की जो हमारी बैलेंसेज है वो स्पेशल एक्यूरेसी में आती हैं जनरली ये बैलेंसेज आपके गोल्ड के लिए जहां पर गोल्ड सेल होता है प्रेशियस मेटल का सेल हो रहा है वहां पर यूज करते हैं या इसके अलावा लेबोरेटरीज में यूज करते हैं चाहे वो रेफरेंस है सेकेंड है और जब हम बात करते हैं कंपेरेटर्स की तो हमारे पास ये बैलेंसेज कहें या कंपेरेटर्स कहें वही हाई एक्यूरेसी के ये स्पेशल एक्यूरेसी क्लास बैलेंसेज होती है इसके बाद हाई एक्यूरेसी है जो थोड़ा नीचे जाता है फिर मीडिया में एंड ऑर्डिनरी है इन सब की जो एक्यूरेसीज हैं उनके साथ बेसिकली सबसे जो इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट मंडल सामने बनाया था बताया था वो वेरिफिकेशन स्केल इंटरवल है कितनी वैल्यू हो सकती है वेरिफिकेशन स्केल इंटरवल की ये मैन्युफैक्चरर डिसाइड करता है लेकिन उसकी एक लिमिट दी गई है फॉर एग्जांपल जो स्पेशल एक्यूरेसी क्लास बैलेंस होगा या कंपेरेटर होगा उसकी जो वेरिफिकेशन स्केल इंटरवल है वो एटलीस्ट वन मिलीग्राम या उससे ज्यादा होनी चाहिए जहां पर डी वैल्यू देखिए एक चीज बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट है एक तो है वेरिफिकेशन स्केल इंटरवल जिसको हम ई e बोलते हैं और नंबर ऑफ वेरिफिक अब दूसरे होते हैं हमारे डी वैल्यू डी वैल्यू कैन बी लेस देन ई वो डी बाई टेन ई बाई भी हो सकता है हंड्रेड भी हो सकता है उसकी वैल्यू पॉइंट वन पॉइंट जीरो वन पॉइंट जीरो जीरो वन और हमारे पास आज की डेट में लेबोरेटरीज में अल्ट्रा माइक्रो बैलेंस तक भी अवेलेबल है इसके अलावा हाई एक बैलेंस है मीडियम एक बैलेंस है और ऑर्डिनरी बैलेंस हमारी होती है जो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट परपजेस के लिए यूज करते हैं यदि हम एनालिटिकल बैलेंसेस की बात करें लेबोरेटरी स्केल्स की बात करें तो क्लास वन एंड टू में आता है काउंटर स्केल्स आपके जो प्राइस लेवलिंग में वो क्लास थ्री जनरली होते हैं प्लेटफॉर्म भी क्लास थ्री होते हैं बट क्लास टू भी हो सकते हैं हॉपर क्लास थ्री में आता है जो हैंगिंग लोड्स वगैरह के लिए क्रेन स्केल्स यूज करते हैं वो क्लास थ्री में आती है और इसके अलावा जो लेटर स्केल्स है या बैगेज स्केल्स है वो क्लास थ्री में आते हैं इसके अलावा रोड एंड ट्रक के लिए क्लास थ्री यूज करते हैं पैलेट वेयर में भी क्लास थ्री यूज करते हैं मैं ये सारी चीजें इसलिए बता रहा हूँ कि हम कई बार क्या देखते हैं हमारे पास ये भी कंफ्यूजन है क्लास वन टू एंड थ्री वन का मतलब सबसे हाईएस्ट ए
क्या नाम है मैन्युफैक्चर का उसका ट्रेडमार्क क्या है मैक्सिमम कैपेसिटी कितनी है मिनिमम कैपेसिटी कितनी है वेरिफिकेशन स्केल इंटरवल कितना है एक्यूरेसी क्लेस क्या है वोल्टेज क्या है फ्रीक्वेंसी क्या है इसके अलावा जब हम दूसरी जो मैक्सिमम एडिटिव टेयर इफेक्ट कितना है और मैक्सिमम सब्ट्रेक्टिव टेयर इफेक्ट कितना है बैलेंस के अंदर वो भी बताना चाहिए इसके अलावा जो हमारा ऑप्शनल है वो है स्केल इंटरवल और टेम्परेचर लिमिट्स भी हम इसमें बता सकते हैं यदि हम बात करें मार्जिन मार्किंग कैसे होनी चाहिए ये इनलिजिबल इनलिजिबल होनी चाहिए लिजिबल होनी चाहिए एक साथ होनी चाहिए ग्रुप टुगेदर मैक्सिमम मिनिमम नियर डिस्प्ले के पास होना चाहिए ताकि जब भी कोई एक कस्टमर इस मशीन को इस बैलेंस को यूज कर रहा है तो उसको पता हो कि मेरी इस बैलेंसेस की क्या क्या रिक्वायरमेंट्स है और क्या क्या इसके अंदर दिया हुआ है यहां पर ये जो कि आपको पता है हम ओ मेंबर हैं मैं इसमें ज्यादा डिस्कस नहीं करूंगा इसके अलावा हम लोगों के पास जो आरएसएस में ये सारी की सारी बैलेंसेस की कैलिब्रेशन और टेस्टिंग की फैसिलिटी हमारे पास अवेलेबल है यहां पर हम लोग जो मास और बैलेंसेस हैं ईच एंड एवरी टाइप की कैलिब्रेट भी करते हैं और टेस्ट भी करते हैं यदि ये फैसिलिटी इसके अलावा लोड सेल फ्लो मीटर और जो थर्मोमीटर ब्लड प्रेशर मीटर दुनिया भर की जो सारी की सारी टेस्टिंग और कैलिब्रेशन की मेजरमेंट और वेइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स के लिए रिक्वायरमेंट होती है वो सारी फैसिलिटीज हमारे पास यहां पर आज जो जो भी लोग हमारे साथ बैठे हुए हैं मैं उनसे रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि एक बार पर्सनली विजिट करें लेबोरेटरी में और देखें क्या फैसिलिटीज को किस तरीके से ये जो भारत सरकार ने फैसिलिटी बनाई है उसको किस तरीके से यूज कर सकता है एंड विद दीज वर्ड्स आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक जिन्होंने इसको पार्टिसिपेट किया यहां पर मैं सब फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक आर एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी मैडम जिन्होंने हु शी शी हैज गिवन हर प्रीशियस टाइम बिकॉज़ आई वाज अवेयर ऑफ दैट दैट टुडे शी हैज वन अनदर मीटिंग एट 3:00 बट स्टिल शी केम टू शी शी हैज जॉइंड अस एंड ब्लेस हर ब्लेस अस विद हर विद हर काइंड वर्ड्स दैट वी कैन कंटिन्यू दिस टाइप ऑफ वर्कशॉप दिस टाइप ऑफ सेमिनार्स एंड वी कैन वी कैन कंटिन्यू वी विल सर्टेनली वी विल कंटिन्यू विद दिस सेमिनार्स सो दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड वी कैन सिंपली एक्सप्लेन वी कैन टेक आवर मैन्युफैक्चरर्स एट द सेम लेवल एट व्हिच द इंटरनेशनल मैन्युफैक्चरर्स आर वर्किंग International manufacturers are having the facility. I would like to thank all the and my director, legal metallurgy, Mr. B. N. Dixit, who has given this opportunity and simply speak spoke. What are the requirements of country today? I will I will thank my Dr. Julian. I will thank my friend, Mr. Kalhenge. Certainly, sir, thank you very much for your and Dr. Mandal, who is always kind enough to help the legal metallurgy to help the metallurgy in the country and not least in the lab. But the most important are the participants. Some of the participants, very few participants. Participants we have at this level. Well, at this, uh, at this, on in, the, in with us in the laboratory, and most of them are online. Thank you very much for attending. We will continue this type of sharing of this information. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arthurji. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. But we'll take your help again. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.